this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Thank you. I thank I you. I wasn't that. provided to the House, but not to this committee. So I'd like to move a motion, if I could, Mr. Chair. You go that, ahead. That the committee order the production of the following documents. A, the advice letter to the then Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry regarding the 2019 appointment of the SDTC chair, as referenced by the witnesses today. B, the minutes of all meetings of the selection committee that considered the appointment. And C, all communication between PCO and then Minister Baines, then Minister Baines's office, the PMO, and I said, that's the industry department, respecting the appointment of Ms. Vicherian as chair of SDTC, and that these documents be deposited with the clerk of the committee within seven days of the adoption of this motion. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. I, well, I'm going I'm I'm to speak to this in a second. Could you, any chance you have that? Yeah, we have it could uh, you, translated. Could you, oh, would you send it to the clerk then right away? Yes. The clerk will then verify and then send it out to the... Um, members for, for consideration. But before that, we'll just take a few seconds. I will ask the witnesses. Um, I, I don't know if you caught everything that Mr. Perkins uh, has, has requested. Was that all tabled with the, the House as far as you know? Um, I'm just I'm just consulting my expert, Rima, and yes. I'm pretty confident it was. Definitely the advice letter, letter in a redacted form was provided, uh, and I think all of the email, like anything that we would have had on the okay. process, I, I would mention to the committee that some documents are transitory and we don't keep them. So sure. this reference to minutes, we don't keep minutes okay. per se, but I'm pretty sure we've provided most okay. of these documents. Um, I, I'm therefore hoping we can... Uh, dispense with this uh, quickly, since the documents appear to be uh, in the in the in the parliamentary precinct, and, and it might not be too onerous for a PCO to provide it. So here's how it worked: Michael, Larry, and I are on the STTC board. Guess what happens? They disclose by testimony, by written testimony and verbal testimony, and by the ethics commissioner's report. They disclose at the beginning of the meeting. Michael, my fellow board member has a conflict on this one, so he may or may not leave the room. Michael chooses to leave the room. Comes and goes out. Miraculously, when Michael comes back, his project he has a conflict with gets approved. Oh, look, Larry voted for Michael's. Now Larry's got a conflict because it was declared at the beginning of the room. Larry, out of the room. Larry goes out of the room, and Michael and I approve Larry's project. Michael comes back in, and congratulations, Larry. 82% of the 226 projects that the Auditor General reviewed, 186, if you're following the numbers, 186 of 226 projects the Auditor General reviewed, these board members were conflicted. They didn't represent 82% of the technology, green technology business. They didn't represent that. They were using the board to feather their own interests. So we need the minutes, we need the letter, and we need the communications in order to clarify this mess about how this happened. And I would urge, urge all members, including government members, who I know believe in transparency, who I know are not happy with the fact that $390 million has been identified as, as conf conflicted, want to get to the bottom of the truth and support this motion. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Yip, I see your wish to speak. You have the floor, please. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, our witnesses have already confirmed that these documents have been submitted to the House. So I don't see the need to duplicate the work here. Um, in fact, I can even um, uh, read that motion that uh, shows that it's uh, been on, um, been, um, been already put forth. Uh, Standing Order 81, paragraph 16, the House proceeded to the putting of the question on the main motion as amended of Mr. Shear. Regina Kiapel, seconded by Mr. Perkins, South Shore, St. Margaret's, that the House Order of the Government Sustainable Development Technology Canada and the Auditor General of Canada 
um, each, oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I think I have the, the wrong, um, motion here. Um, Mr. Perkins thinks you have the right motion. Ms. Yip, would you like me to come back to you? I can put you on, on the list. If, yes, or, Ms. Yip, I can. back on the list. I'm sorry. I, right. I thought I had the right. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'll go to Mr. Cooper, and then it's uh, your colleague, Ms. Khalid's spot, and she might want to yield to you. If not, you'll come after her. Is that okay, Ms. Yip? Okay. All right. Yeah, Mr. Cooper, fine. you have sorry. the floor. Yeah, no problem. Mr. Cooper, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I want to speak in strong support of this motion that is imperative towards getting to the bottom of how it is that Annette Beersharon was appointed chair of SDTC, notwithstanding the fact that her companies had received $20 million in funding, putting her in multiple conflicts of interest, how it is that the decision was made by these liberals to appoint an individual as chair of SDTC who was conflicted the first time in the history of SDTC that a chair was appointed who had multiple conflicts. Ms. Khalid, you have the floor, please. Thank you uh, very much, Chair. And as I was saying earlier, you know, we have spent a significant amount of time in going over, reviewing with a fine-tooth comb, as we should, as is the role of the, of the Public Accounts Committee, to review and ensure that the taxpayer dollars are spent effectively, that there is effective oversight, uh, and we do that by reviewing the reports of the Auditor General. We review that by having the Auditor General here before us in committee to ask questions on her recommendations. We do that by raising awareness of, of any issues and challenges, any discrepancies in process. And SDTC has been one of those files. And you know, like I 100% agree with what Mr. Perkins has said with respect to um, every single member on this committee, regardless of which side of the aisle we sit on, cares about how public dollars are spent, cares about the oversight, the responsibility of our committee, and how we conduct ourselves. Every single member in this committee has a viewpoint, has an angle in which we perceive what is going on here with our own lived realities, with the realities of, of what is uh, going on in our constituencies. So where, you know, and I just want to get this uh, off of my chest before I, before I go into, into the specificities of, of the motion before us. Things do get heated, of course, but I, I, I want to remind members that we're all on the same committee here. We all have the same objectives here with respect to, to what we're trying to achieve. That doesn't mean that we should be disrespecting members on this committee. That does not mean we should be disrespecting the witnesses that come before us. I think that we all have the capability to conduct ourselves in, in a professional manner, to ask the questions that, that are necessary, to, to find ways to improve efficiencies for the issues that we are dealing with. And that issue, and I'll remind all members in this committee and anybody who is watching, the ultimate objective of the role of the Public Accounts Committee is to ensure that taxpayer dollars are spent effectively and efficiently and that rules are followed and that the Auditor General's reports are implemented uh, with, the, with the will of, uh, of this committee. So it really troubles me, Chair, when I hear members mocking 
others um, who are not in the room, they are here virtually, to, uh, to make a mockery of what they're saying. Because I think every single person's viewpoint matters on this committee, including Mr. Cooper's, including Mr. Brock's, and including Mr. Perkins, and Madame Singlet de Gagné, and, uh, and Mr. Uh, Desjardins, and including you, Chair. And I give a lot of respect and creed to that. And I think that we should all have some respect for what, what we all have to say on this committee, because I think ultimately we are all coming from a good place. And that kind of leads me into, into this, this motion and, and where we are going from here. Now, we heard from, from witnesses many, many times that the issues that are addressed in this motion or the, the production or the documents that are requested have already been tabled uh, in the House. So I'm not sure why we need to duplicate the work of what has already been done unless we're, we're looking for clicks, unless we're trying to... I, I honest to God, can't even begin to fathom why we would want to duplicate the work that all parliamentarians, that the House of Commons has already conducted. So it's, um, it's interesting um, where we're going from here. I, I would have preferred to, to go on to committee business and, uh, and discuss uh, a very important motion that has been presented by Mr. Perkins, but I think... Um, Perhaps I can make uh, a small amendment that would improve efficiency uh, in how we're conducting ourselves as a committee uh, in, with respect to, to the production of, of documents and, uh, and with this motion. So if I may, Chair, I would uh, put forward an amendment uh, to strike B, the minutes of all meetings of the selection committee that considered that appointment, and the reason is, as we heard from the PCO officials themselves, is that these meeting minutes don't exist. I mean, it's, it's odd that we'd request something that officials just indicated that that doesn't exist. And, uh, you know, like I think the PCO officials were on the record uh, saying that. It's unfortunately, it's just pretty clear that the, the CPC um, conservatives, they, they drafted this amendment well in advance and that the, tis, the witness testimony was a prelude to this motion rather than actually listening to what the witnesses have had to say and taking that and, and owning it and moving, learning from it and, and moving beyond it. So I would really appreciate um, that, um, you know, like that we appreciate and acknowledge that a lot of these documents um, that have been stated in this motion have already been deposited uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the law clerk. So that is my amendment, Chair. I would, again, would like to strike B from the meeting minutes of, uh, uh, strike B, which states that the minutes of all meetings of the selection committee that considered that appointment. Uh, and that's uh, the in only intervention I have so far, Chair, but I would like to get to the bottom of the list. Doing, but for, for, for the record, my, we don't have the minutes yet of the committee meeting, my recollection of the answer to my question was with respect to my question uh, of PCO, was there anyone in the room that objected to her appointment because of the conflict of interest? Um, and the officials actually said they went back and checked the record, i.e. the minutes, and the minutes don't reflect that detail of the conversation. She did not say there were minutes. There are minutes. She, that's what she said. She said that we didn't keep minutes of whether or not somebody objected. So there are minutes. There are records of the meetings. So, no, that's okay. It's okay. I don't, <laughs> it's okay. So, so my, my only response is I think part of the understanding of the process is to understand what the minutes reflect in the decision making process and discussion that happened around the replacement of Jim Balsilli as the chair with a new chair uh, on fairly short notice and that 
we've had a lot, as I said earlier, a lot of conversation around was it 10, was it less than 10, was it 6, was it 2? And the minutes combined with the letter, uh, combined with the other testimony, is what we need to get to the bottom of it. So, uh, personally, I think we need all three. And with regard to the tabling in the House, as MP Cooper said, uh, again, just for the record, those documents have not been tabled with the House. They are in the process. Many of them have been redacted contrary to the House order, so there will be issues about that when the House comes back. So to say that these documents are available now, um, I would love the clerk to call the law clerk and say, give us these documents and share them with the committee. And I'm pretty certain I know the law clerk will say, I don't have those documents uh, as you asked for unredacted. Uh, I may not even have the documents at all. Because I do know in the response from SDTC, they're still in the process of providing the law clerk with documents. They have not provided the clerk with all of the documents. And PCO gave guidance to redact, contrary to the House order. So I suspect PCO has redacted their own documents that they've given to the House, which won't tell us what it is that we're looking for. These are unredacted documents that we're looking for here uh, to ensure that we understand where the truth lies in this uh, sordid tale. Thank you. I have Mr. Desjardins, and then after that, Ms. Khalid. Mr. Desjardins, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and I want to just thank my colleagues for this discussion. Mr. Perkins, thanks for your clarification. That was part of my questioning as well. As, uh, in response to the motion, I do know that we just heard from the, one of the witnesses that some of these documents were made available, but your explanation here uh, explains that there are still some outstanding questions, and I think it is incumbent on our committee to try to answer as many questions that members possibly have, and should any of the members' questions be answered, including mine, by way of this production of documents, I'm happy to support it. Um, I think to the argument of Ms. Khalid regarding the striking or amendment of B, um, if in fact that if in fact there are no documents to produce within the motion as originally stated, there will be no documents to review. If, however, we sustain B, keep B in there, and there are you know one or two documents to reveal the facts related to Mr. Perkins' question as to who was in the room and whether or not they left, etc., those kinds of details, I think they're important. And so, for those purposes, I do I do agree with their original motion unamended, and I think it serves both points, including the points made by way of the. Amendment presented by Ms. Khalid. Thank you, Mr. Dejale. Before that, we have Ms. Khalid has the floor. Thank you, um, thank you very much, Chair. And I, I do want to just uh, correct uh, the record. The um, uh, the uh, PCO officials said that the minutes were transitory records and wouldn't exist at this point. So that's why they haven't been provided to the House. So I, you know, again, want to want to go back to to my point to say, if we know and have been told that something does not exist, what's the point of asking for it? Are we trying to make a political statement, or are we trying to to fix an issue that we have identified here? And what would be the purpose of getting these records? I. I'm still trying to, to figure this out. I mean, we've had we've had a lot of, of meetings on this, and you know, to, to Mr. Desjardins' point, you know, he wants to get back to our study. Well, what's the purpose of this study at this point? We have brought in so many broad ranging issues into this, where I think not just myself, but a lot of members on this committee have kind of lost focus as to why we're doing what we're doing here. The original point, and I, I will reiterate, is for us to make sure that taxpayer dollars are being used effectively, efficiently for Canadians. And if that's not happening, how do we make sure that that happens? And we're looking at SDTC to figure out what has happened. And we know that as soon as we, the, the minister realized wrongdoing, he took action right away. And we are continuing down this path to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And in fact, I'm looking forward to debating Mr. Perkins' motion, which hopefully we'll do before time runs out in this committee, uh, on what, what are the next steps. So 
production of, of documents which are already available in the House to all members, but will be, Mr. Perkins, and then asking, knowing that those documents don't exist, asking for further documents of meeting minutes, informal meeting minutes, that we know and have been confirmed by PCO officials that they don't exist. I'm really not sure how that helps us further this study at all. So I, I, I do hope that members will support my amendment to strike what is blatantly obvious, what we've already been told by PCO officials, that these transient minutes, scribbles on a notebook or whatever they may be, do not exist. So why are we asking for them? other than I don't know what kind of political advantage anybody would, would be able to gain from them. So, again, I would encourage members to say, look, let's be efficient, let's focus on what is important here, and let's ensure that we're trying to find positive solutions to what needs to be done to make sure that public dollar is used efficiently and effectively and where there are issues, where there are challenges, where there is wrongdoing, that is corrected immediately and efficiently. Is this going to get us to do that? No. So I would again, to, to my point, tell members this amendment is necessary for efficiency to make sure that we're not going down rabbit holes that take us away from the main focus of what this study is about, and that is improving efficiency and transparency within the SDTC and within government institutions. Um, and I will park my comments there. I'm not sure who else is speaking next. next. Thanks, Chair. A clerk, please call the roll call on the amendment to the motion. Uh, Voting yes signals members would like to strike B in the motion. Voting no signals members would like to keep the motion as is, as was presented by MP Perkins. Over to you, Clerk. Ms. <coughs> Ms. Bradford. We. Oui. Ms. Khalid. Yes. Ms. Efner. In favor. Mr. Weiler. En favor. Ms. Yip. Yes. Mr. Perkins. No. Mr. Cooper. No. Mr. Brock. No. Madame Saint Clair de Gagné. No. Mr. Desjardins. No. Against. Five yeas, five nays. Thank you. The amendment to the motion is defeated. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move an amendment to replace the seven days with three weeks, just because seven days is a, is a short amount of time and the regular process for production is a minimum of three weeks across all committees. And, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's quite fair. Uh, for members to request these documents in such a short time span. Standard of three weeks really should be respected, both to ensure nothing is missed, translation is adequately conducted, and um, the committee stands by its precedent on this. Thank you very much, Ms. Yip. I have an amendment to the motion to change the, the time from 7 to 21 days. Um, that's calendar days. Uh, Mr. Perkins... You have the floor. I, I just point out the contradiction of MP Yip, who said the House already has them, so they should be able to produce them yeah. and wouldn't need three weeks if the House already has them. Thank you very much. Clerk, could you call a vote on the uh, amendment to the motion? Uh, voting yes signals members would like to extend the deadline to 21 calendar days. Voting no signals the Motion will remain as is with a seven day deadline. Over to you, Clerk. Ms. Bradford. Yes. Ms. Khalid. Yes. Ms. Efner. En favor. Mr. Weiler. Favor. Ms. Yip. Favor. We. Oui. 
Mr. Perkins. No. Mr. Cooper. No. Mr. Brock. No. Madame Saint Clair de Gagny. Oui. Mr. Desjardins. No. Six yeas, four nays. Very good. The amendment is passed. The motion is amended with a time, uh, a, a response time of three weeks from today. I'll now turn back to the uh, motion as amended. Clerk, please call. Go ahead, Ms. Khalid. I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering. Um, you said the motion as amended. I'm just wondering what the amendment was. Uh, it was your colleague's amendment to extend the timeline from seven days to three weeks, 21 days. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Call the vote, clerk, um, on the motion as amended. Ms. Bradford. No. Ms. Khalid. No. Ms. Hefner. No. Mr. Weiler. Entre. Ms. Yip. No. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Cooper. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Madame Saint Clair de Gagny. Oui. Mr. Desjardins. Yes. Five yeas, five nays. The motion as amended is passed. 